Hey, hey, this is Tara from Wild Bird Farm. I garden here in Zone 5 in Central Iowa. I've been away for a week, and so things, chores, tasks are just piling up here on the farm. Today, as you can see behind me, is a spent patch of sunflowers, and I'm going to show you how I quickly or semi-quickly flip a bed today. A thunderstorm last night looks like it brought us about an inch and a half of rain. The grass is very wet this morning, so I decided to try my high C boots for the first time. These were sent to me to try out to see how I liked them. I got the brown color. I'll put some more details in the notes section, and I also have a percent off if you want to try some for yourself. The code WILDBIRD will get you 15% off your purchase. So I did pick off of these sunflowers. We also had them available at a couple of you picks. Um, the blooms are well past their prime. You can see here in the foreground, um, partially I replanted this row a couple weeks ago, but this way I'll have a couple of late successions. It is late July here. So these will be blooming in mid-September. Um, every once in a while we have a frost that early generally it's early October though so this will probably be my last succession of sunflowers for the season what I like to do and I'll take you up and show you an example of the tarps but what I like to do um, for sunflowers specifically is I am going to break all of these stem flowers off at the base if I don't get them quite at the base I kind of step on the stem to kind of smash it down I also have grass that grows up in my sunflowers. I don't use any um, row cover or landscape fabric. So I generally come through um, with a hedge trimmer or a lawnmower and cut that grass down really short. We got an inch and a half of rain yesterday, so I'm not sure how that's going to look when I get in there. If the grass is too wet, I might have to let it dry. Um, we have kind of a haze going this morning, but I can tell that that's going to burn off pretty quickly and that sun will dry the grass. So we may have to play it by ear a bit um, for that part. But once I have everything scalped very low to the ground, I just take a, um, a tarp. You can also get old billboards that are recycled. Those are great for tarps. Um, the ones I buy are 4 feet by 18 feet. Let me go grab one here. four feet by 18 feet. Um, we just get these at our local home improvement store. I think I have at least eight of them now. These work okay. They aren't the perfect size for my beds. Most of my beds are three or four feet wide and then 25 feet long. So I'm having to double up if I'm doing a full row. If I'm doing a smaller section, I just kind of fold the piece over. I use landscape um, bricks, I use rocks, um, I use the silver um, smaller push-in T-posts to hold these down. I'll show you that as well. It usually takes um, seven to 10 days-ish to kind of have the sun work on that plant matter under your tarp and kind of have everything decompose. Um, I'm going to take you up. I pulled off a tarp just a minute ago um, and it is ready to plant. I'm actually going to put cover crop in that space um, so we can take a look. I think they're pretty nice looking. I got the brown pair. Um, they say they keep your feet warm. So right now um, in late July, I don't need that, but I do need the waterproof piece because as I mentioned, we got an inch and a half of rain yesterday. The grass is wet. Everything's wet out here. And I get so sick of ruining tennis shoes or having my feet exposed and having really dirty, nasty feet by the end of the day. So we're going to try these out. I'm assuming they might keep me a little bit too warm, but in the cool and rainy spring or in the cool fall, I think they're going to be extra wonderful. So I'll give you a quick report here at the end of my task. So we're going to walk up and look at a couple of rows that have been tarped. This is where I had bachelor's buttons and if you've been around for very long, you know that I've said I was going to kind of do away with a full row of those. You can see here I have it pulled and stretched the full four feet and then down 18. 
but we're missing some on the end. Well, I picked up several more tarps, so we're gonna finish this off today. Um, this has been in cover um, for about a week, so let's see how it's doing. I'm just gonna um, pull the steel rod out here and we'll take a peek. All right, you can tell that definitely some of the plant matter has broken down. Some of the peskier grasses are still green under there. So it needs some more time, which is just fine because we need to uh, finish the row. Now I have a partial row up here. I'm trying to think what was in this. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna remember now. Um, oh, I know there was some Orlea at the end. Not sure what was up here closer, but you can see my tarp. I had this one um, down with bricks and it looked pretty good. I came out this morning and just pulled off. After, after it's been on seven to 10 days, you're gonna have a lot of dry, dead, decaying matter. I kind of pulled that off the top. I will sometimes go back through and use this just as a little bit of dry mulch if I'm replanting here. Um, I especially like to do that in between the rows. I'm gonna broadcast uh, buckwheat seed here though. So I think I'll probably pick that up and put it in my wheelbarrow, but you can see things have decomposed pretty well. I did come through here with a hoe and something like this stubborn root was still green. I just kind of popped that out of the soil. For the most part, it's ready for planting, um, especially since I'm doing a cover crop here that's going to eventually get hacked down anyway. I'm doing buckwheat to add just a little bit of green matter, green manure back into the soil. Um, so I think not having it absolutely perfect is going to be fine in this case. Um, but you can see that the tarping method works pretty good for most um, plant matter just to kind of get it broken down and decomposing. Now to the task at hand, I am breaking off the stems right at the base of the soil as much as I can. I want to leave the roots in the soil to feed those microbes and keep that soil living and I can easily plant my next succession around the small root balls. They will eventually decompose, especially if I were tarping the area. It helps speed up that breakdown process. There are lots of different methods out there for no-till gardening. One resource I have turned to time and time again is Jenny Love's podcast, No-Till Flowers. If this is something you want to try, I highly recommend giving that a listen. As I worked on this bed, it was really wet and the grass was quite long, so I changed my thinking of what I was gonna do today. And so I moved forward to the bed in front of the one I was previously working on. I had done the same process by removing the sunflowers last week, but I didn't get around to tarping it. So I decided to scalp that remaining grass down low again and then I'm gonna tarp this one. And the one that I was pulling sunflowers from, I'm gonna clean that up completely today, pull all of the grass. It's gonna be pretty easy to pull um, because it is such wet ground. And then I'm going to turn around and immediately plant some sunflower seeds. All right, we've got our tarp on, actually tarps, because this is 25 feet and my tarps were 18. I had to double up, you can kind of see the seam here. Um, and then there's another one down on that end. I decided to wrap the tarp around um, the wood frame of this bed. So you can kind of see how it's um, coming down here and you don't see any of the wood. I decided to do that because the first time I did this on these beds, I laid it inside the bed and all the grass along um, the wood was still green when I went and pulled the tarp up. So I'm hoping this is more of an all over the entire bed will kind of be um, killed and died back. Um, so we are gonna leave this for seven to 10 days um, and then we'll come back and see what it looks like. I'm not sure. This will likely just get a cover crop. It'll probably get buckwheat. Um, we're getting pretty late in the season for sunflower successions. I may plant some just kind of as um, 
kind of an outlier that they would be blooming um, in late September, early October, um, but we'll let this die back first. Now I'm gonna finish up this morning um, by in the far bed, pulling that grass, um, kind of getting the dirt kind of moved back, worked up nicely, and then I'm gonna plant sunflowers, probably, as I said before, my last succession. Um, after that, I have a whole lot of garden cleanup being gone a week. Um, there are tons of spent blooms. There's still some Japanese beetles that I need to be mindful of and keep um, kind of fighting those back. Um, but a full week here of work on the farm before I have a you pick. Um, it's actually a week from today. All right, flower friends, let me know what you're keeping busy with down in the comments below. And I'm also really curious how you flip your beds if you are um, doing no-till, if you're using something like the tarping method to kind of um, kill back any unwanted plant matter before you plant in the bed again, or maybe you're using a tiller so you can plant immediately. I'm always interested to know what works well for other people to see if I can implement it here. Here's the bed I pulled sunflowers out of, now all prepped and ready for the last batch of seeds. I'm going to be putting in some Pro Cut Orange Excel, some Plum, and some Red to finish off the season. I've made short rows horizontally in this bed. I'll drop seeds in pretty close because I want smaller flower heads for bouquets, and then I'll lightly cover them with dirt. And just a wrap up, thank you Hi C for sending me these waterproof boots. They kept my toes and feet dry this morning. If anyone out there would like to try a pair for yourself, again, my code for 15% off is wildbird. Until next time, flower friends, stay cool.